What's going on, guys? In today's video, what we're going to be going through is the PL, the profit and loss for allied healthcare clinics. Now, before we get stuck into this video, just down below, you'll find a link to assess your clinic. If you haven't already gone to the Assess Your Clinic link, it is a fantastic way for you to actually understand what are some of the opportunities within your clinic for you to improve, to grow, and to help more people. Also, while you're there, you'll find the little like and subscribe buttons there. Perfect. Give those a little tickle for me, and we'll get straight into it. Now, in today's video, what I'd like to go through is the profit and loss. And be talking through this a little bit, and it's going to be short, sharp, and shiny. We're actually doing a webinar on this on Tuesday. Uh, if you're watching this video on Sunday, that is, uh, you can still register for that. If you're watching this and it's in the past, I'm sorry, you can miss out on that one. Uh, but we will be hosting more of these in the future. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to jump. I'm going to share a screen now so you better see what I'm seeing. And you better see this screen, which is the functional structuring of your profit and loss statement. And a few things here. The outcome here, relevant, meaningful, and useful. A lot of people, when I get them to look at their PL statement from a healthcare perspective, what, what it seems to happen is they go, well, I've got all of these numbers here and it's kind of like a dog's breakfast and it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So what we want to do in today's video is to help you to help it to make sense to you because that's important while still obviously making sense to your bookkeeper and your accountant. So why is it important? So you can accurately compare the following. Your past performance versus your current performance. We want to know how have we done and how are we doing and how are we going to do into the future? How can we forecast into the future? We want to understand the functional areas as a percentage of total revenue so that we can compare against other similar clinics so we can see, well, how are we doing against the benchmarks? If the benchmark for admin is 10% of your revenue, then it makes sense that you should have 10% of your revenue or less or admin. And if it's more than that, we want to understand why and how can we change it? And we might be looking at it going, well, we actually can't decrease our admin costs. And so what we need to do is we need to increase our revenue. You might say my admin cost is $15,000 per month and my revenue is 100,000, so that's 15%. And we say, well, we can't decrease that from what we want to do. So we actually need to increase our revenue to 150,000 in order to make that a reality. So I hope you can see what we're doing there. Functional areas against themselves in different time periods. So looking at call it admin this June compared to last June compared to the June prior. Okay. And other similar businesses to benchmark and fairly compare. You can then make quality decisions based on accurate and contextual data about things like hiring team performance systems and optimizations. And you can also separate practitioner salaries and wages from admin and support team wages too. So if we scroll on down, we're going to come down to making your PL functional. Now, there are seven steps, nearly did eight, seven steps that we're going to go through in today's lesson. Now, the first one here is reconcile your accounts. Now, before we do anything, we want to make sure that we are reconciled and we are up to date. Now, typically what we do is we get people to have everything reconciled by the 10th day of the new month or the second Tuesday of each month whichever one works best for you, but making sure that that is in the diary, it's happening consistently. Very important. Now the action, you could say you have an Asana task on the 10th day or maybe the ninth day in order to make that happen. So the 10th day could be to review the PL, and for the person doing the reconciling it could be on the eighth or the ninth day. Now the reason that in my clinic, I chose the second Tuesday is the 10th day could fall on a Sunday, right? So by going the second Tuesday, it always gave us at least seven days to get it done. And it always meant that it was on a Tuesday. So I could have that scheduled into my diary. Now, step two, speaking with your bookkeeper or whoever does your bookkeeping. Now we had ours done in-house. You may have yours done externally. But importantly here, we wanna work with them, not against them, to actually create this into a meaningful document, okay? Now, coming down here, when speaking with the bookkeeper, you want to communicate that our intention is to do two things. We want to more specifically allocate expenses into accounts so that we can break it down into different categories that are meaningful. And we want to more accurately reconcile accounts into a relevant category or group in your profit and loss so that we can compare against other functional areas over time. 
So we may be finding and recoding things within your profit and loss. Now, if as I'm talking through some of this, you're like, what the heck is he talking about right now? Then this is something that it's okay. Have a chat with your bookkeeper, with your accountant. They will understand what we're talking about here. And as we go through today, it's gonna to make a bit more sense. Okay, so stick, stick around to the end. Now, step three, always very, very important is open line of communication, speaking with your accountant. So your accountant is the expert here. And we wanna make sure that again, we're not working against them. We're working with them to find the best solution for you and for your business, okay? Now they will have certain ways how they like to do things. So we wanna understand from their perspective, how does this fit into to what they do, okay? Now, step four, we wanna create a new chart of accounts. We wanna create new line items. So what that looks like, uh, and here are the steps here. So you may add accounts specific to healthcare clinics. So these may be things like admin wage, practitioner wage, Facebook ads, Google ads, recruitment company. You can see the account line items for us in our management template. The second one, rename any existing line items more specifically to what is allocated to that account. And you'll see what we mean in a minute. And then we wanna create any new slash necessary line items or accounts. And we wanna go back and check previous reconciling, find and recode if necessary, to make sure that they go into the right area. Okay, so if you're using zero, this is kind of what it looks like. We wanna group the expenses of a similar background in the same area of the chart on the accounts. Okay, so down here, it says, we don't wanna have a marketing expense with the code 403 and then another marketing expense with the code 700. So you might have 403, 403A, 403B, which is what we've gone through here. So you can see chart of accounts, how to edit. And then this is for zero. If you're using my old QuickBooks, it's gonna be slightly different. But in accounting, you would right click on the accounts, open new tab, add an account, and the account type for this one would be 403A. See how we've added the A at the end? that helps you to group similar expenses. So we can see here in this example, and hopefully this makes sense. So your list of marketing expenses might look like Facebook marketing being 403A, Google AdWords, 403B, sponsorships, again, marketing, so 403C, and website, again, marketing, 403D, and you may have promotional printing material, and that could be 403E. So we're, uh, we're grouping all of these together so that when we're looking at on the PL, they sit together and we can actually have them grouped under marketing expenses, okay? Now, step five, we can create a new profit and loss structure layout and we use grouping, we've got a specific template that we use. So you will create a, create a new layout, create groups on your profit and loss and you'll uh, move things into these groups. They're quite easy to move around on zero. Uh, if, again, using QuickBooks Mild, similar sort of structure. Cater you want to categorize the existing line items into the new layout according to your groups and set a rhythm for reconciling and reflecting on your P&L. And like we said, once a month is great on the 10th or the second Tuesday of each month. Now, what you'll find, and this is in here as a, a nice little note, often accountants have a different have a difference of allocation for these accounts, okay? So subscriptions, often any subscription can be allocated to this. So let's have a think about this. We wanna make sure that the right subscriptions are going to the right area. So you might have some subscriptions that are Spotify, it may be Netflix, maybe you've got that at your clinic, whatever it may be. And that will go in a certain area. And then you may also have professional development uh, subscriptions. You may have business owner subscriptions. You may have uh, practice management software subscriptions. So these are all going to sit under different categories. Just because they're a subscription doesn't mean they should all be lumped together. Now, if we go to the next one, marketing, again, we've broken this one down already, and then wages. And, th and this is a this is one that we see, I would say too often, everything's just lumped into one. So we wanna have practitioner wages, which is a cost of sale. We wanna have admin expenses, which is, a cost of, or sorry, an operating cost. And our practitioner super as well is then a cost of sale. And our admin super is an operating expense. Okay. 
So if we come down to number six now, the ratio of analysis, ratio analysis of trends, sorry. So then what we can do is, and I'm more, most familiar with Xero. So we can actually export this from Xero into Google Sheets, and we can actually find out what are the exact percentages over a period of time. So for example, the one I used before was admin wages as a percentage of overall revenue. So ideally we wanna keep our admin wages below 10% of revenue. Now, like I said earlier, if it's more than 10%, you may think, do we need to decrease our admin expenses or do we need to increase our revenue? Both of those will change that ratio. And understanding in your clinic, what is the best strategy moving forwards? And you may also be happier, happy, sorry, to have your admin wages as a higher percentage of revenue, as long as you're well aware of why it is that way. And then the final part here, the final part, step seven, create a budget. And this is an important part of everything that we do as business owners in healthcare is to actually be able to track our expenses, create a budget, make sure that we stick to this budget. We can share this with the relevant people within the team, create that budget, share it with them and help them to be successful from a financial management perspective within your business. So what we can see here is an example of the CM management report and I'll really quickly go through this. So section one, how, how we'd have this laid out is income. So revenue, and you can see we broke this down to physio, podiatry, myo, and bank interest coming in could be from a term deposit where you might have a bank guarantee sitting product revenue and other revenue as well now section two running through this quickly less cost of goods sold now this could be our consulting expenses our payroll expenses product expenses etc going through this and understanding these are the costs of directly creating those sales that's how we figure out what is a cost of good sold then that gives us our gross profit. And then underneath we would have our operating expenses, also known as overheads. So in here, we've got our admin expenses, wages, super, printing, stationery, et cetera. General expenses, we try not to have too much under general. We wanna keep this very specific. Occupancy, so this could be our rent, electricity, gas, water, business insurance, There's the whole lot under here that you can see. Marketing expenses. Um, depending on how you market. Now, this can be for clients, but this can also be for practitioners as well. And so you can have things under here under recruitment marketing. Then we've got support service expenses. So we've got bookkeeping, uh, clinic mastery, consultative business consulting, accounting, legal, zero, et cetera. Uh, then we've got our sundry expenses, so charity donations, bank fees, credit card fees, and then our non-operating expenses, which tend to be our direct expenses. And then down the bottom, it should then give us our net profit. So there you have it, a very abbreviated version of going through the profit and loss. And you can go so much deeper into this. You could spend hours and hours going through this, getting everything exactly how you like it. And I'd encourage you to do that, to spend some time with your bookkeeper, with your accountant, and with the people in your team who are responsible for doing this. Getting this right and getting confident in your numbers is going to help you to make the right decisions with your business moving forwards and feeling confident in the data that you have to make those decisions. As always, please like and subscribe. It helps us to reach more people. And I look forward to seeing you in the next lesson, my friends.